if you were to fast forward and Jordan, if Jordan Davis wins the Heisman, like, can you imagine him on the Heisman house just with all these wide receivers <laughs> and running backs? Like, just mountain of a man just walking in, like, <laughs> who stole my who stole my Swedish fish? <laughs> Welcome to My Got A Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I preview Georgia's matchup with Charleston Southern, but we spend most of our time answering questions from you, our listeners. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got A Podcast. Finally, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, rate, five stars obviously, and review the show. If you leave us a review, you just might hear it on an upcoming episode. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. Uh, actually, are you are you going to go? Are you going to go to this game? Am I going to go to the game? I don't know, man. It doesn't look good. The Carter Sucker Tournament uh, schedule came out today, and so hmm. um, not only are we playing, not only are we drawn in a, in a pretty tough a tough tournament this, this weekend, uh, we play some teams that they haven't played in, quite some time they put a number two team in the state um in group play uh saturday afternoon at five o'clock so okay it's not looking good yeah that would not would would not uh line up well yeah uh we actually just finished like everything or everything will be done so lily had her last game on sunday on this past weekend and then uh, so soccer they've actually got their last kind of fall season ending practice on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, we actually kind of have an open weekend. Uh, I think our, my, like our, you know, family tickets are being used. Like my, uh, my sister and brother-in-law and their kids are going. So, um, there will be butts in the, in our seats <laughs> at a minimum. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I may last minute be like, I'm going to go. And then like my dad and I will go. Otherwise my mom and dad will go for the last two seats, I think. So TBD, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I want to go. I want to go. Uh, we'll see. I'm kind of, I'm kind of up in the air a bit. Which I, I started with that instead of what I usually start with, which is what was that in your glass? <laughs> that was a good one. What do you, uh, what do you, we got today? Woodford. You've got the Woodford. I've got uh, Maker's 46. I'm trying to polish off the rest of this bottle. I just ran out of that. Uh, I need to go get some more. So, at any rate. It's such a reasonably, it's such a reasonably priced um, bottle. I actually, um, yes, this past weekend, so this is just the regular Maker's 46, but there's actually a cask strength. So this is 94 proof. The cask strength is like, I want to say it's like, 106 or something like that proof a um, little bit stronger a little bit bolder I guess of, of a flavor I haven't actually had it so I did see it this weekend so I might, I might have to grab one of those here soon gotcha gotcha nice it's such a good such a good bottle and it reminds me of Stetson Bennett because it has S4 on it the S4 <laughs> right 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 which we did not notice in, until a certain episode right uh, yeah could have who Which was it? Bernie, I think Bernie Dog. Bernie Dog told us on Twitter what it, what it meant. So that was good. Yes. The the mailman delivered again. Thanks a lot. All right. So big, big, huge, monumental matchup this weekend against Charleston Southern. First question. Yes. Do, do you know what their mascot is? I do. Um, let's see. What do you? What does a pirate? What does a pirate pay? For a drink at the bar, Jim. <laughs> a buck? A buccaneer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they are, yes, the buccaneers. Um, 12 o'clock, new, the, the noon kickoff uh, for the last home game. Uh, the game is on SEC Network Plus. Uh, so I think that will generally show up like in your DirecTV guide or your cable Guide. I think for folks like me with YouTube TV, I think I have to like use the ESPN app to, to find that. But uh, that's that's okay. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, the official hashtag gets a little tricky this week. It's a little longer. So it's hashtag CHSO versus UGA. That's the hashtag. 
Um, for those who are going, it looks like a, you know, I don't know, decent day. I mean, obviously it's cold <laughs> this time of year, but like partly cloudy, high 55, low of 34. So, you know, it's the time of year where you, you get to break out your cold weather Georgia clothing that you don't get to wear as often. So that's always fun. Like, you know, get your nice sock yeah. hat maybe that you got. Um, you know, you could wear your, ooh, see, now this makes me kind of want to go because I could wear my starter jacket to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I should bust out the starter jacket. I've yet to wear that to, uh, to a game. Although I wore my other, it's not a starter jacket, but it looks like a starter jacket. And it's actually from the 90s. Yeah, I wore that to Lily's soccer tournament uh, <laughs> a couple yes. of games ago. Um, it still fits. Still fits. I got that when I was like 13. The good thing is, you know, everyone wore baggy clothes back then. <laughs> so it still fits me now as an adult. Anyways. Um, That's pretty awesome. So let's see. Charleston Southern, uh, they're coming in with a four and five record. Uh, that's overall. And they are three and four in their conference. Do you know what, what their conference is? Ooh, I don't. Is the American Conference? I'm just going to throw it out there. No, so they're FCS. So it's not one you would have uh, heard of. I, the Big okay. South. The Big South is their The conference. Big South. Okay. Uh, do you know how many times we've played these guys before? I do know this answer. Mm. We've played them once before in 2014. Yes, yes. 2014, and we beat them 55 to 9. So in 14, so that was what? That was Hudson Mason. Uh, that was, you know, Chubb, etc. Uh, that I'm does not, not bode. That does not bode well because this is a much better team. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember at what point in the year that was. I feel like um, that was maybe like the week before Georgia Tech. Like I think it was at the end of the season. So I think like uh, Gurley would have would have been out at that point. That would have been post injury, I believe. So at any rate. That's a that's the the only time we've ever played them before. So not a, not a lot of history and you know things to reminisce about <laughs> to go through right. with these guys. <laughs> um, so we we can kind of go to the the news and notes, I suppose. So a few things. So it is it is senior day. Um, you know something that that Kirby got asked about in the press conference was around like players uh, like walking. Right from the pregame festivities for for senior day, um, and he basically said that you know he kind of leaves that up to the players. You know, um, pointed out that they didn't have it. You know, for, as we all remember, Vanderbilt stole our senior day last year <laughs> when they canceled right. us, so we missed that. He did say that like the guys that are back now, so like um, Justin Schaefer, Devontae Wyatt, Julian Rochester, they were all seniors last year and came back. Yeah, you know, with the COVID uh, extra year, um, he did say that they were actually all planning to walk last year. Um, you know, had there been a senior day, so basically, if you walk as a senior on senior day, that does not mean that you're saying I'm going to leave. Um, you know, you could still come back. So, you know, a lot of these yeah. guys, you know, who knows? I, I, I mean, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's, it's kind of a conversation down the line, but you know, with again with the whole COVID rules, like most of these guys could still come back. I think, you know, Wyatt, Schaefer, <laughs> Rochester, who's been here for like, you know, I mean, I think Rochester really is a Rick recruit. I was about to make that joke, but I think he actually is, right? Um, like, <laughs> uh, you know, most of the other guys, you know, could potentially come back, so. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that um, a lot of them are, I mean, <laughs> there's just so much to consider with the COVID year. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some questions on Stetson and JT, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys that could potentially come back. Yep, yep. Um, so something I, I wanted to follow up on something from last week's news and notes because if you recall, we were debating whether or not uh, hopeful and hoping if there was any kind of difference because Kirby had said something <laughs> a little bit different, and I had to go look go look up what we were talking about. Uh, thankfully, I still had my notes from last week. Uh, so last week it was Salyer. It was what he said about Salyer that had us questioning, like, ooh, maybe he will play because he said hoping, not hopeful. But as we saw, Salyer still did not play. So it seems like either are the potential uh, kiss of death, which, again, 
he talked about Salier in today's press conference, you know, said he wasn't quite able to play last week. He was close, but then he had the dreadful, hopeful to get him back. Um, I think the Dom Blaylock, uh, news, I guess was a little interesting. So he said he's, he's practicing, he's healthy. He just hasn't been able to jump in the rotation because he hasn't gotten much work with the ones and twos. Um, so I don't know this, I mean, this could be a week. Maybe we see him as long as he's actually healthy. I don't know. Just considering opponent level, mm, you know, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I, he mentioned hopeful. So I'm, I'm Oh yeah. I'm that's really, that was on there too. Out. Yeah. It's a problem. I'm really gone out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the good news, uh, God, I almost said hopefully, but whatever. <laughs> what we think is potentially good news is he said that Nolan Smith should be fine and Devontae Wyatt should be fine. So um, I'm just going to – That should ease, that should ease, your, uh, ease your, your soapbox from my, the last episode. My, my <laughs> rant from the Tennessee Review. Fair. Yeah, the rant. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So – Let's let's uh God, I, now he's Kirby's got me wanting to say hopeful and hope nonstop too. I almost said it again, so whatever. <laughs> let's see those guys play this week. Try not to use that word. Um, now we get into the point of the of the show where we break down and analyze the three phases of the game and what it will take for Georgia to come out victorious. Um, <laughs> I think we can kind of just bounce around more than, than we usually do. Um, yeah, we'll keep it loose. We, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, I mean, virtual, virtual bye week. <laughs> so in our, you know, in our vast, uh, and very thorough podcast preparation, you know, uh, it, it does seem like, so this, um, they, they used to be a triple option team. And so part of what I was saying earlier when I was saying that I, I feel like we probably played them the week before Georgia Tech back then, you know, that was when Paul Johnson was at Tech. And we used to do things like let's get a smaller school that runs triple option as an opponent on the schedule the week before Georgia Tech, right? So it was like a, an extra you could, br- you could practice the triple option for two weeks and basically have like – a glorified scrimmage, right? Kind of heading into tech to make sure that you're ready for Georgia tech. Um, So I'm guessing it was something along those lines back then. Um, But yeah, so they're not doing that anymore. Um, So they have, you know, they switched coaches a few years back. Uh, Autry Denson is their coach now. And he brought in, you know, some form of uh, spread offense. So uh, no longer, uh, no longer a triple option, which I mean, I mean I'm I'm glad, right? I mean, triple option. Um, oh man! Don't want to face that Talk like late it. in the year, right? With all the low blocks that go on with that type of scheme, right? Exactly. So definitely happy to be playing a. I don't know. I guess I mean at this point the spread is pretty standard, right? So something more similar to what we see on a week to week basis. Hmm. Would be nice. Um. So, but interesting, like with spread, spread doesn't necessarily just mean uh, straight up air raid, right? Um, so they do they do uh, run the ball a lot, um, including their quarterback. Um, so their quarterback is their leading rusher, uh, Jack Chambers. So he's their leading passer and leading rusher. Mm-hmm. Yep, the that's that's certainly strange for a spread team, I guess, but. Yeah. Um, as we've seen, as we've seen in the past, running quarterbacks that are the leading rusher and passer for t- their team hasn't, hasn't hasn't worked out very well for everybody. Well, I think it'd be fair to say, you know, like um, you know, like Auburn, right? Auburn under Gus Malzahn. Um, I mean, that was a spread offense, right? And you know, you'd have Cam Newton, <laughs> uh, right? Was probably well, I don't, I don't know also, if he was leading rusher, but had to be close to it, right? Y- you also kind of have to, I guess, take into consideration that if, if you've got a spread team, some of these little passes that are dink and dunk, they show up under the receptions, but they're really function as running plays, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they do seem to have, um, I don't know, it seems like that they kind of go with the hot hand uh, of the of the moment. 
Um, you know, some of their – they've got multiple 100-yard receivers. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. You can call it five, six. Five or six games where they had a 100-yard receiver um, on top of, you know, Chambers, Chambers throwing. So, like, they've got some guys that can catch the ball. A couple, couple hundred yard rushing days um, out there as well from the quarterback, but then they've got this uh, this Oscar guy that just had just rushed over for a hundred yards recently against Gardner Webb on their most recent victory. Uh, I believe this is um, this is actually their their last game of the season. So technically, this is like their senior moment too. Hmm. Interesting. Uh- I, I was just kind of. I don't. I don't show them having a game after Georgia. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Well, because with FCS, right? I mean, they get into the their playoff. I mean, not that playoff, they're going to yeah. make it, right? But like, um, you know, I think the season ends a little earlier uh, as they as they transition to playoffs. So I was kind of just going down a little bit of rabbit hole uh, on the side here because mm-hmm. I knew their coach's name sounded familiar, Autry Denson, and I was like, where do I? know that name so hmm. like did it sound familiar to you uh autry denson yeah so he he was a running back at notre dame back um in like the late 90s okay so he uh let's see he was the uh mvp of the 1999 gator bowl uh for, for notre dame so that's that's where i okay. that's where i recognized him so he played in the nfl for a bit um, got drafted by Tampa Bay. So, at any rate, that it, it, that's where uh, I knew it sounded familiar. So, um, another another Buccaneer, another yeah, Buccaneer yeah, exactly. connection. <laughs> you know, also interesting, right? Played at Notre Dame, like Catholic, you know, college, and uh, Charleston Southern is actually like a Southern Baptist university. I don't know if if you knew that. I was trying. I was trying to like do look up like fun Charleston Southern facts. I couldn't come up with much of anything. Like that was kind of the only thing I saw. <laughs> uh, I got nothing. Yeah, I, I mean, nothing. it wasn't so much a fun fact. It's just like a fact. Like it, it is a Southern Baptist University. So, right, anyway, right, right. Uh, I, I think you had b- before we hit the record button. What was your your take on just kind of you were just looking at kind of the matchup stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I was just looking, like, if you were to look at this from an outside looking in, you know, what do the stats look like? If you were to hand the the stat sheet to your, you know, to your daughter or whatever, and what would she see? And just kind of some of the matchup information, you know, other than the scoring and the offensive, defensive stuff. But if you look at, like, the passing yards and rushing yards, all that kind of stuff, you see two fairly, you know, evenly matched teams, right? Right. Well, as we know, there's <laughs> the Georgia team is where your offense goes to die. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, based on the spread that just recently came out, too, Jim, right? right, right, like we didn't even have in our notes that there was a spread, but right. lo and behold, there became became one today. It's, it's it's on the board, as you as you put it. Right. Yeah, it's a good thing we we record at night on Mondays and, and not. <laughs> All right, time out. Munson is whimpering at my door. Give me a second. I was also looking at uh, news headlines when you went away, which one one particular news headline caught my eye. Flooding in the Middle East is is causing scor- fat-tailed scorpions to infest certain areas of the Middle East. Hmm. Like five like five people have died and 500 people have been hospitalized because of these scorpion stings. Interesting. Google fat-tailed scorpion and <laughs> prepare to have nightmares. <laughs> uh, are we back? Are we back? Have we time? Have we done time in yet? Or are we about to time in? <laughs> I, feel <laughs> time like that in. Was, I feel like that was good content right there. Okay. <laughs> that was good content. We can time in. We can we can include it while you're away. I don't know. I had an I have I had an irrational fear of scorpions growing up as a kid. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what it was. I think it was like the Clash of the Titans, that, that movie. There's like a scene in the Clash of the Titans where like this this scorpion, like this giant scorpion, like just goes through and wreaks havoc on everything. <laughs> uh, yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, yeah, I do know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Okay. My nightmares as kids were as a kid was like <laughs> – 
A, because one was when I watched, I say a kid, I don't know how old I was, but I was way too young and I watched Full Metal Jacket. I like that mess with my head. Um, was it Tales from the Dark Side? I saw that movie. That movie always creeped me out. There's like a gargoyle segment. I didn't Which like movie? Uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Mm. It was like a, kind of like a, it was one of those movies where like there's not just one story. It's like a, almost like an anthology or whatever. Like there's like four different segments, I guess. Kind of like Twilight Zone the movie. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Anyways, mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, let's time it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, Fun, it's going to be difficult to stay on the rails uh, when you're previewing Charles and something. Not to be dismissive. I always, I always like fact. To, to, pair, to add that. Yeah. Fun fact: Dame Maggie Smith um, is 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 a was a cast member of Clash of the Titans back then. She must have been very young. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know who that is? No. <laughs> uh, she plays the. Did you ever watch Downton Abbey? Yes. Do you know the old lady that was like? She would always have these like these like very British zingers. Oh, like the grandma. The grandma, yeah. She was like the grandmother. Amazing. That's her. That's nice. her. She was okay. in Clash of the, she was in Clash of the Titans. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. I, I have to figure out where after walking away. Maybe maybe we just never even timed out when I went to go let the dog in my office. <laughs> I'll just let it roll. Just let it roll. <laughs> hey man. It's we're we're keeping it loose. It's it's bi week. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I do I hate to be dismissive. But, you know, holy cow. Okay. Uh, where were we? Uh, you know, we were doing the anal- analyzing. Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing else. Other than, like, you know, we can talk through some things that, like, we want to see out of this game. But I think we've got some questions about that kind of stuff. So we can just talk about that via through as we go through the listener questions. But, um Charleston Southern, very bad. University of Georgia, very good. What listener questions do we have, Jim? <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's let's just go there. Uh, first up, we have Zach. Uh, you can follow Zach on Twitter at scdog864. Sort of a thought-out question, but all-time Georgia coaching staff uh, can be staff from any team ever. So I assume this means can I can I add a clarification, John? Is that okay? If I add a clarification, yes, always. I read I, you know this. Me. I love I, I love clarifications. I, I read this as I read this as like you're you're saying like this team's staff was the best. Like insert team year that that staff was the best. Not like I'm going to take Vince Dooley as head coach and Todd Munkin as def- as offensive coordinator and it. You know what I'm saying? Like pick and choose any coach from any staff and make your dream staff? Or is this – I'm assuming it's like what was the best staff ever. Does that make sense? Mm. Do you see the difference? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm reading it as – wait, did he actually use the words dream staff? No. He said – yeah, he said all – well, he said all-time all time Georgia coaching staff, and then he put parentheses, can be staff from any team ever. Hmm. I mean, given the historic the historic uh, magnitude of what's going on right now, you have to go with the current staff if you were to go with a full staff that's on right now. Yeah, because um, here's like, the issue with that too, right? It's like this staff just knows a lot. I mean, let's like you, you, it, it's kind of like comparing current athletes to like you know, yeah, exactly, right? Like Babe Ruth or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like well, everyone's in a lot better shape now and. All that kind of stuff. So, you know, coaches today just know more, <laughs> frankly, right? Well, so, there's that, but then there's also the fact that the coaches also have like fifty thousand people supporting them. Right, right. So let's do it this way. Let's do. Let's go like back and forth, uh, and like do. Let's just do head coach. Head coach. Who are you going with, Jim? Mm. Mm. See, now I'm already struggling. Like, <laughs> you know. So for me. You know, options, right, would be Vince Dooley, Kirby Smart. Dude, I, 
right? I'm I'm going I'm going Kirby Smart all the way. Mm, I just... see, but see, here's the thing: like, because well, what if you go? What if you go like Vince Dooley, head coach? I mean, what if you did this? I don't think you would do this. So here's can I'll we give move you my people rationale. around? You... Like, can Mark Rick be the offensive coordinator and Kirby's the defensive coordinator and Vince Dooley's sure. the head coach? That'd be pretty amazing. Ooh. Well, technically, Mark Rick was the offensive coordinator, so I think Ooh, that you yes. are well are well are well within your your grasp on that one. Ooh, but do we have to make Kirby the running running backs coach? <laughs> like two thousand five, he was never the defensive no. coordinator at Georgia. So is he no. ineligible? Does that matter? Wait, Georgia uh, Kirby? He was never the defensive coordinator at Georgia. Well, if I have coach. if I have him as head coach, if I have him yeah, as head yeah, yeah, coach, yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna right. I'm not going to put him as the defensive coordinator. Right, but mine, I was saying, could you do Vince Dooley, head coach, Mark Richt, offensive coordinator, and then Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator? I don't think you could, based on what we just said. No, because... Honestly, like, it's hard to not say everyone, like, right now. Um, I mean, I could rattle it off fairly quickly. hmm, Okay, so, okay, go for it. Uh, Well, I would have to have a clarification. What (laughs) roles did Eric Russell... What, was Eric mm. Russell only the only the defensive coordinator? Uh, like over time, did he have? I mean, when he left, he, he was the other, defensive coordinator. Did he have other roles? So that's what uh, I was. I, I, that's kind of so you're kind. That's kind of where I was headed. Like you know, you could do we could do Kirby head coach, Eric Russell defensive coordinator. I mean, you, I feel like you have to have Munkin as the offensive coordinator, though. Like, have we ever had a better offensive coordinator than Todd Munkin? Yeah. No. Uh, well, I mean. I mean, Bobo Bobo, had great stats, right? But I would, I would put, I would put Munkin as the offensive coordinator. I would put Bobo as the quarterbacks coach. Mm, Nice, I like it. Okay, okay. Or I would leave Del McGee as running backs coach. I feel like I would leave Del McGee as running backs coach for sure. Um, Are you going to have Willie Martinez as your all-time secondary coach? Uh, that's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confirming what, what roles Irk had as. Oh, you're the, trying to make Irk Russell be the secondary, like, <laughs> like, like defensive line or secondary or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. Okay. So he was the defensive coordinator for, yeah, he was the, he was, he was the Georgia defensive coordinator from 1964 to 1980. That's tenure right there. That talk about like talk about things continuity. that would never be re- replicated. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Mm, I think I think I think we're tough. close enough. I think we're, we're we're fairly close. We didn't come in prepped uh, with an answer on that one, so I didn't come in prepped. I wasn't ready for that. That's, that's a okay. that's a tough one. That's okay. Um, you have to like go back and like w- w- what was Wally Butts? <laughs> what was Wally Butts? Was he other things? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go to the next. The next one's a lot easier to answer. Um, okay, what do you got? So Zach had a second question. Do you have any good or bad feelings towards Stett or JT coming back next year, uh, with the quarterback room getting very crowded with talent? So again, they can both come back. So JT, I think, is a junior technically. Um, I think that's right. And then Stetson is a senior, but with COVID rules could come back. So Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like, I mean, there's no telling, like I kind of feel like one would come back and not both. Um, But here's the issue. Like, I mean, at this point, I don't know about JT going to the NFL. Like it seemed like a foregone conclusion before the season started, but it's certainly not at this point. Right. And with the changes to transfer rules, like the the immediate waiver is like a one time deal, so he's already transferred once. So if he transfers again, like he's not guaranteed to be able to play right away. He'd have to apply for a waiver again, just like he did last time. So you run that risk, right? I feel like it's a foregone cl- conclusion that JT is coming back. Okay. Maybe I'm crazy, but yeah, I feel like I feel like if he were the type of you know if he's as I mean, I'll be a little snarky here, but like, if he's as good as everybody says he is, then he hasn't really proved it at a high level, in my opinion. So, like, if he were to go, it would be a pretty risky draft for him. Like, and maybe, mm-hmm. and maybe that's okay. He doesn't strike me as the type to like, you know, just want to be done with college. Like, 
you know, we talked about on this podcast, you know, um, Holyfield, you know, we thought that Holyfield should come back. We thought that Nada should come back. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, frankly, he doesn't have nearly the body of work against top tier teams that either of those guys had. So it would be a really questionable thing. Now that said, there's not a whole lot of quarterback talent out there right now. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, at this point, at this point, I literally do not care. I literally do not care what, what happens at the quarterback position because Kirby has shown that he will figure it out. Like he's going to figure it out. He, He recognizes the importance of the quarterback. We have Brock, we have Carson, we have JT, we have Stetson. Um, we've got Gunner coming in. From you know rumors on the recruiting trail, there are quarterbacks that want to come to the university right now that we are basically saying no or that we're not accepting. So like, if you're turning people away at the door of the club, tells me that you've got a pretty desirable position to be in. And should all of a sudden those guys transfer, then all of a sudden you have an opening. It sounds like that there would be people beating down the door to get here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really too concerned about it right now. So you don't have good or bad feelings. You're just like, you know what? If they come back, they're here and we've got them. If they don't come back, we don't have them and – Regardless, we're going to be okay at the quarterback position. Is basically right. Here's the, here's to, the, here's to the thing, Jim. Yes, here's the thing. Um, anything related to next year, I do not care. Yeah, I do not care true. about what's going on next. I do not care what's going on next year. I am a sponge for this season. This mm-hmm. is the season that every single one of us has dreamed of since. You know, we all started following Georgia that since we've realized how, how long it's been, all those things, like everything that the university has been about over the last decade and a half, um, since, you know, frankly, since Mark, well, I mean, probably two decades Mm -hmm. ever since Mark Rick came around, like we showed a progression of intent, a progression of intent to climb the the apex climb the summit um and we've basically put our money where our mouth is we've put our talent where our mouth is and we've got a coach that used to play for us like are you kidding me we've got a kid (laughs) we've got a we've got a walk-on about to lead us about to lead us into the sec championship (laughs) yeah yeah and yeah Uh, that that part too right there i mean think back Think back to the last year, Arkansas game. Like, I don't know about you. I feel like you weren't as surprised as I was. But, like, when Stetson was the person that came off the bench um, and replaced Mathis, I was, like, shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> like, Stetson Bennett? Holy cow. And then now, here we are, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Agreed. It's, it's, it's very cool, considering that back in 2017 – I didn't even really know who Stetson Bennett was until um, uh, when Mel Tucker post game talked about what a beast Stetson Bennett was yeah. in replicating the offense. Like, had you had you really heard anything about Stetson Bennett before then? No, I think we all it was the same thing, right? We all We're heard all about like, we all heard about who the heck is that from guy? The Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, yeah. So, so you know, he was. He was basically spelling and, you know, backing up Jake Fromm, which, you know, on paper, everything that Jake Fromm was like is kind of what, I mean, I hate to say it, but like Jake Fromm kind of JT Daniels by and large, like very much like kind of reminds me of Jake Fromm nowhere near as, as mobile, although we never really saw it from Jake in his later career, but yeah. I don't know, man, he just makes the throws and makes the good decisions and was the manager and the game manager. He was like everything. And then to hear that this guy, Stetson Bennett was, you know, really the star of the show in, in the game prep for us getting to the national championship. And that guy happens to be the quarterback right now after he left the university, by the way, and then came back and (laughs) like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like you can't make this up. Like someone somewhere should be writing. Right. I feel like Nathan should write the screen screenplay for this. 
<laughs> nice, nice. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll put glasses on it and uh, ask me. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is from the chairman uh, at the chairman Mao. Uh, he asks, "Has Georgia faced anyone like Ch- Charleston Southern? Is this Georgia's oh first gosh. and only real test?" <laughs> so just playing on the, you know, every week it's like the, this is <laughs> we will finally be tested. So yeah, no, but yeah, um, no. it's it's just rinse repeat until. So people are tired of coming up with excuses and we run out of, we run out of time and yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Atlanta, Sean, how good is their long snapper? Which I feel like you, I feel like you added, I feel like you added that accent. I, look, I, I read it how it was spelled. I read, you know, and this is, this is, I believe, you know, this kind of goes back to, the old like Vince Dooley coaches show. So, you know, this would be like, you know, we would be like this huge favorite over insert team and, you know, Vince Dooley would be, they had like the pregame show or whatever. And he'd be like, well, they have the nation's best onside kicker. And he'd be like, you know, all convinced we were going to lose to whoever I, that actually did happen by the way, the onside kicker, I think it was like Oregon state or something. Um, but I don't know how good he is. But I did look up who who is their long snapper, and his name is Ethan Ray. And fun fact, he wears the number zero. So the long snapper will be trotting out there, number zero, Ethan Ray. Don't know how good he is, uh, but he is a senior. So he's been around for a while. You know, I imagine he's fairly good. So Shout out to the long snappers. For sure. All right. Salty Dog at rather be fishing five on Twitter, not getting into the Stetson Bennett versus JT debate, dot, dot, dot. Do you guys think coach smart is making a mistake by not playing JT more in preparation? Uh, because JT might be needed at some point during our championship run. So salty dog. I like how you were like not to get into the debate, but kind of leaning towards the debate. <laughs> Just thinking we might need him. Um, it's, it's kind of like me like betting the over and <laughs> predicting score. <laughs> predicting score hits the under. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. Like I would say it, it didn't bother me that Stetson played the entire Tennessee game. I'll put it that way. Um, I think that um, – I think the next two weeks um, – the odds are the score will get to the point where we're going to see JT Daniels over the next two weeks. So, you know, maybe not enough last week, but also, you know, we don't know what's going on in practice. Right. So I don't know. It's hard to say without knowing that. I mean, we don't know if JT is looking great in practice or if he's still struggling, you know, he's, we saw a little bit of rust at least um, when he did return and play against Missouri maybe he looks even rustier in practice. Like I have, you know, who knows? Um, But I I do expect to see him coming up in both of the next two games. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that it's necessarily like a mistake by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, so here's, so here's how I would phrase this. Like to say that it's a mistake that implies that we can't figure out how to win. Like Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're saying that like we need to prepare to lose, if that makes sense. So like mm. we need to have a backup plan, which right. obviously I think we do. Like we know what the backup plan is. The backup plan is to put JT in. It's almost like uh, he's the emergency button that we can hit. Um, mm. I I don't know. I, I, I feel like that Stetson and Monken have just kind of like gelled. Yeah. And – at this point, I don't know. Like we're we're producing at such a high level, and I'm I'm waiting for John, and I'm gonna I'm gonna nudge him on this to to push it out there sooner rather than later. But like John has a metric that we were looking at that like just just like absolutely is puts puts pen to paper everything that we've all been feeling. I don't want to steal his thunder, but like yeah. Everything that we've all been feeling is encapsulated in this metric that John like dug up from several years ago that I haven't heard anybody talk about. Everybody talks about yards per play, points per game, 
um, net yards per play, which are all great indicators. But there is a metric that's out there that l- appears to encapsulate everything that we're talking about. And Georgia just happens to blow everybody out of the water in this in this category. And it's like, yeah, you know, when you look at the offense, you look at the defense, the defense is obviously a huge component of this. I think I heard Tony mention this on um, the Wait and Since last Saturday um, review show for the the Tennessee game. Tony basically he's, he 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 kind of laid it out, and and it makes total sense to me. Like everybody talks about, oh, you, you can't have defense wins championships. That's the, that's not a thing anymore. You know, it's, <laughs> everybody's got to have offense. We got to have offense. Got to have offense. Yeah. Well, it appears that based on this year thus far. Um, and frankly, like, I'm going to go ahead and just say, like, I think that we're going to win it, but the, it appears that you really just need on one side of the ball, you just need to have a, a, a composite of team that is just head and shoulders better than literally everyone out there in, in, in the country. And the Georgia defense is, is that, um, when you look at the strength of schedule, all the all the opponent stuff, like we, our defense is just playing at the level that, like, and and probably beyond that, like LSU's Joe Burrow's offense did, and Matt mm-hmm. Jones Alabama offense did. Yeah. So when you have the defense playing at such a historic level, it really doesn't matter what happens on the offensive side. It just so happens that the offensive side is actually performing at a very high level. Mm-hmm. I think we're like in the top three. Um, in terms of some of the offensive efficiency numbers and, and d- data points out there, like the the net yards per play, or the, sorry, the offensive yards per play, uh, Georgia's actually performing really well. And when you take John's metric that he was that he kind of surfaced to to us earlier today, it's like wow, like yeah. holy cow. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely. Uh, so we're talking about John Tweet Sports, and if you haven't yet, definitely sign up for his. Uh, for a dog dispatch. Um, so he, he sends stuff out. Um, it's on the site, but you can also get it in your email inbox once a week. Um, I think that's going to be featured in that this week. And then, yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at, you know, Josh, um, you know, dog stats, he, he's big into the yards for play in that yards for play. And, you know, we, we've reached what I know kind of his like benchmark for what makes an elite team. Right. I mean, we've been above it like all year, um, at least since I think it's just the third game. So. Yeah, yep. I think that the 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 senator and Josh like net net yards per play, which I definitely was have been tracking all year long. I think we mentioned it previously, but the net yards per play, basically the you know senator Butarski he, he kind of outlined it like you know elite teams operate above a certain threshold. I think it was like two point seven five or something like that. Georgia's like above that. Yeah. And that we've been above it all year long. So it's like, okay, we're tracking where we need to track. And it's kind of just like a, a benchmark of like, are we overrated or are we not? Well, based on that metric, we definitely are not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then his, you know, John's metric that he was talking about for the dog dispatch was like, you know, it also takes into factor like efficiency, which is something that people throw out there. It's like, oh, yeah, yards per play is great, but it doesn't really art- articulate like how efficient you are. I think that this actually does a pretty good job of encapsulating all of the things that people have been feeling about this team. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that kind of, or I don't know, part of what we were just talking through, or at least talking about Stetson kind of leads in well to, to this next one. So this is from SSI dog. I would love to see a blind comparison test of stats between Bryce Young, Matt Corral, Stetson Bennett, and any other of those considered top quarterbacks right now and see if those bashing Stetson Bennett could pick out his stats comparatively. Might be eye-opening for some. So I don't have exactly that, but I had already done something similar that I had I had planned on doing. Um, so we're going to do that instead, but it's somewhat similar. So, John. Should I be looking somewhere? No. Well, I mean, I could. Okay. Yeah, so you might want to get uh, a notepad. <laughs> or you can type this down. So if you want to just say, all right, because I'm going to say, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you some stats. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm not going to say who this is. I'm going to say like, you know, quarterback A. Mm-hmm. So let's start with Stetson Bennett or somewhere else as I go through these. Quarterback A. 
and this is through the same amount of games. Okay, so I, I do want to say that, right? Because we're 10 games in, but Stetson hasn't started 10 games. Okay, right? Mm. He started seven. So what I will say with it, with this is these stats that I pulled together for the non-Stetson Bennett's, <laughs> I will say they're not all Stetson Bennett. It's not like a trick question where every single one is Stetson Bennett. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like they're all like, so the first seven starts of a season, okay? That that was first the fairest seven starts. The fairest way I could think think of it because Stetson okay. has started seven games. Okay, so through seven starts, quarterback A is sixty nine of one hundred and thirteen passing. So it's a sixty one completion percentage for one thousand one hundred twenty yards, twelve touchdowns, and four interceptions. Is that Stetson Bennett? You said this it was year, 69%? 61% passing. 61% passing. That is not Stetson Bennett. Correct. All right. <laughs> Quarterback B. 99 of 148, 67% pass. That's 67%. 1,409 yards, 13 touchdowns, four picks. That is not Stetson Bennett. Correct. Care to guess? Well, let's keep going. <laughs> You're like, I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Quarterback C, 85 of 131. That's 65%. 1,470 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions. That is not Stetson Bennett. Okay. And last, 123 of 174, 71% completion percentage, 1,406 yards, nine touchdowns, three picks. That's definitely not Stetson. Damn it, was the last one Stetson? It was. So quarterback C (laughs) was Stetson this year. So Okay. And here's a here's a here's a here's the trick. The other three were all one quarterback. Care to guess who the other quarterback was? The other three were all one quarterback? Yep. Three seasons of the same guy. Three seasons of the same guy. Okay. Guess. It's a Georgia quarterback. <laughs> Was it Jake Fromm? Yep. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the funny thing, too. I The first three, I just went. Uh, so I went from the first one was from as a freshman. Uh, the second one I gave you was from as a sophomore, so 18. Uh, the third one, which we said that was Stetson. And then the fourth one was actually was from in 2019. The funniest, the funny thing to me is from statistically, like we all like talk about how awful 2019 was through seven games. That was Jake Fromm's best season against the first seven <laughs> games of the other two. Um, that's crazy. So if you look at this, right. So, uh, yeah, the, the, so he threw for, Jake Fromm never threw for this many yards through his first seven starts of any seven of any season. Okay. And again, I said first seven starts, right? Because in 17, for example, I did not use the app state game, right? Cause he didn't start that game. I probably could have included, but I didn't, I just followed my rules. Um, so Fromm is a freshman through seven starts, 69 of one, 69 of, 100, of 113, 1100 yards, 12 touchdowns, four picks. So again, you know, Bennett, 85 of 131, 14, 70 yards, 14 touchdowns, two picks. Um, I mean, Fromm never, Fromm never threw 14 touchdowns in his first seven starts, never threw for as many yards. Um, he had a higher completion percentage than that in 18 mm-hmm. and in, in, in 19. Uh, but, I mean, he's right there. So, what you know, I mean, and Fromm was good. We were very excited about Fromm when he was here, right? So, Stetson Bennett is right <laughs> there with him. Yeah. I don't think that we asked Jake Fromm to ever push the ball down the field the way that we've asked Stetson to do it this year as well. Mm-hmm. I think it would be interesting to look at the air yards per attempt yeah. on on some of those those completions because, like, I was trying to listen. Like, since I don't really know like a hundred percent like what the stats are, I kind of thought that I might have known the interceptions, but mm-hmm. the completion yeah, percentages yeah. is what I was listening for. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I thought you were going like the other direction with it. I thought you were going to give me like, this is Bryce Young. This is. Well, I told like, you, yeah, I didn't have that. Spencer, I, Spencer Rattler or whatever. Yeah, like. yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't have, I, I had already done the From comparison. And then, 
as we discussed, I had a, a, a home improvement issue that I had to take care of this evening with a clogged sink <laughs> in the kitchen, and I did not get to <laughs> add additional quarterbacks uh, prior to recording. So apologies. Apparently, apologies. Putting, apparently putting rice down the drain is a bad idea, Jim. Bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Don't do that. That's That actually is like interesting, though, because, I mean, I, I, although I feel like that there's a whole swath of the Georgia faithful that are going to be completely unimpressed with that because they didn't want – Jake Fromm or thought Jake Fromm was a terrible quarterback and wanted no one Justin thought Fields that. Not, and all in, that stuff. not in 2018. Nobody thought that in 2018. There definitely was. There's no. a whole swath of. I bet. I guarantee you. I guarantee you that the same people that want JT Daniels to play quarterback right now are the same people that wanted Justin Fields to play quarterback. Okay, in like the third or fourth game, but when we were smoking Alabama at halftime of the 2018 SEC championship was anyone saying well if we don't switch to Justin Fields we're going to lose this game no nobody was thinking that like everybody loved Jay right. back then you know I mean so I, I don't know. that's all hindsight garbage <laughs> I feel like I feel like you just triggered some Justin Fields folks <laughs> that's fine that's fine I don't care <laughs> Uh, let's see. Just like I don't care about anybody that thinks that JT should be starting when uh, Stetson's been dealing the way that he has. Uh, so, so I haven't, uh, and it hasn't come out yet, but I asked a question of uh, Chapel Bill Curve. I, I did ask CBC. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting uh, their next episode to drop because my question was, has Nathan come to terms with the fact that Stetson Bennett's QB1? Um, so he said the short answer is yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to hear, hear that because... Last week when I said some other podcasts continue to talk about that, I was talking about Nathan. <laughs> um, so I, I think, it, you know, if, if he's been convinced, uh, I think everyone should be. So anyways. For sure. Um, so 51 to 7 GATA said Georgia has kept their starters in for, for a majority of every game, it seems. This has to be a different story this Saturday, Right. And so, obviously, I had my rant last episode about um, leaving the defense in for too long against Tennessee, but that's neither here nor there. With, with this opponent, I would say, yes, that's going to change. And, it, it, you know, it, I mean, it's been a while, right? I mean, we, we emptied the bench against UAB. I'll say that, right? So, now, UAB, much better than Charleston Southern. Um, but so, I would, see, I would expect to see even more bench emptying here that we saw against UAB. Yeah. What's it, what's scary about that for the gamblers out there is that the, if, if there's a junk touchdown that's scored at the end of this game from a pick six from JT Daniels, it's going <laughs> to set some people off. <laughs> I mean, end of the game, man, end of the game, we're going to have either Beck or Vandegrift is going to be in there late. I, I think we're, we're going deep. We're going deep into the bench this, this game. My I hope. I hope so. I would love. I would love for them to just, just slam the gas down and just shut everybody up. How so? Like just like blow the doors slam off these the guys, ga- or yeah, blow the doors doors off. Like clear the benches. Like blow the doors off with 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 all the guys. You know, you know like Carson Deal. Yeah. Let yeah, JT yeah. Deal. Let uh, Vandegrift come in. Um, I'm sure there's a walk on in there somewhere. Like, come mm. on, Nathan Priestley. Uh, Daniels is he still here? I think yeah. he's here. I always want to call him Jason Priestley, but it's Nathan. I think. Uh, I think we were talking about it earlier this year. Maybe it was the UAB game, but there was like a Prather Hudson. It was wh- whoever this year's Prather Hudson mm. is. Sivan, <laughs> I'd like to see uh, Sivan Clark. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his first name right. Uh, but yeah, he's the he's the the running back. Ooh, maybe could we have a Jackson There's, Jackson Muschamp sighting? That's that's when you know you've gone really deep. There you the go. That's what <laughs> over under Muschamp snaps at quarterback point five. Is he is he a is he a senior? No, he's like he's he's a walk on. Okay. He's like a freshman or something. Okay, I'm just yeah. making sure. Yeah. All right, uh, Jason Huggins at Hugdog18. Obvious goal is to win, stay healthy, and play a ton of guys. Who are you most excited to see play on Saturday and why? Is there anyone in particular, John, that you're excited to see? I would like to see Brock Vandegriff with the with the handcuffs off. Mm, yeah. So the, the caveat there is, like, I'd like to see Brock come in and run the offense. Not just turn with, around and hand with, the ball off like he did against UAB. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to see someone come in like that. I don't want to see someone like that come in and like never throw the ball. Right. Yep. So if 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 I had my way, which I, I recognize Kirby is just not that kind of guy, I'm sure that we'll end up grinding the clock out the whole time. But like, I would just. Just love to see like what does Brock look like in game right now? Like what are what, how does how does he run the offense? Because you know by and large he appears to be the heir apparent. You know for maybe not next year, but you know year after, mm-hmm. a couple of years from now. Like that's that's kind of where I feel like that the team is going to try to go. You know, Gunner obviously coming in is going to change things, but. Um, maybe Arch changes things if he comes in. But like, <laughs> right now, Brock is Brock yeah. was the guy that everybody was like, "Oh yeah, what, watch out for Brock this year. He may come in and take over." Yep. I mean, remember remember when he threw his first pass in the spring game, and it was like, yeah. "Ooh, <laughs> that guy's got a cannon," and he took off running. I, I would like to see. I mean, I'd like to see him, like you said, handcuffs off. I'd like to see him running and throwing. Right. I'd like to see yeah. him run his own read and keep it. And see what he can do yeah. with that. I'd love to see that. And yeah, I'd like to see him. I mean, see he seems arm. like a better equipped. He seems like a better equipped um, Stetson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to add someone else, I would like to see some of our young linemen get in. So like Amarius Mims, um, see what he can do. That's not quite as sexy as saying like Brock Vandegrift, but something else I'd like to see. Yeah, for sure. That was also like one of the dark horse, like freshman impact players that we had here. But yeah, yeah. But hey, but we were right on Brock Bowers, so we'll, <laughs> we'll focus on that instead. Uh, see, Andy Coleman uh, at Rain T Dog. Which, do you, am I getting this right? Don't you know Andy, or am I thinking of somebody else? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, his sis, his wife was is the sister of one of my buddies. Okay. From soccer um, after college. Okay. They own a real estate company. Coleman sold it. If okay. you're in the Fulton County area. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so he says, let's talk about getting Washington and Bowers several early touches to keep future defensive coordinators stressed to the max. Oh, and I want to see big Dor- Jordan Davis in a fridge Perry type goal line dive play. I would love to see Jordan Davis score a touchdown. That would give me nothing but pleasure. Um I don't know. I don't know that there's anything that we can show anybody out there that's going to give make anybody more or less nervous. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel like we've thrown the kitchen sink at at pretty much everybody. I mean, maybe not like the kitchen sink, but like we've we've thrown a lot at folks. I mean, yeah. we just threw. We just. I, I feel like that the past. If anything, like I feel like incorporating James Cook into the game plan and like mm-hmm. getting more wrinkles for James Cook is going to give more uh, pause for thought of defensive coordinators than anything else because that pass play to James Cook was like holy cow! If you ever basically if you ever see a linebacker coming out wide on James Cook, I fully expect Saban to call a timeout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not far off from like. Well, we had like what McCall Hardman got matched up with a linebacker against Tech. I mean, not that Cook is that fast, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, he just he's spoke pretty like quick. That. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's fast. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it, I, I do, you know, again, like everyone likes to hate on Gary Danielson, but he totally called that <laughs> when when Cook went in motion. He totally called that. So, got to give him credit on that. Yeah, for for real. Like, I don't know, Gary gets a bad rap. I like Gary. Um. But yeah, and, and I would say you know, we we've we have seen those guys. I mean, I'm sure we will hear. I mean, this game screams like 75 yard touchdown to Brock Bowers at some point, kind of deal, you know? Um, yeah. On on not even I'm not even saying like it's a bomb or anything, but like kind of like the one against UAB, you know, uh, like a wheel route type thing. I could definitely see something like that. I don't know that we'll see the Jordan Davis thing. I mean, I know like. They're act- I mean, the Jordan Davis for Heisman thing has grown some legs. I still don't think it would happen, but um, they mentioned him a- it on the broadcast last week. Yeah, yeah, but that's different from him actually getting invited to New York. I don't know. I don't know if that happened. Um, but probably not. Giving him a touch, you know, wouldn't hurt that. I don't. I-, I feel like that's the kind of thing that Kirby would brush off and be like, "Oh, we're not gonna." 
we're not worried about individual awards kind of thing, for, you know? For sure. Right. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm trying to think. So when we do the jumbo package though, when we do the jumbo package, Jalen Carter is the fullback and Davis is on the line. I'm assuming as a tight end unless he's reporting as like a tackle. So we'd have to look at the exact formation, but so I'm assuming he's a tight end. So I would say, I don't see them flipping that around. I don't think maybe there could be a jumbo package play action pass to Jordan Davis. That that would be, I was just going to say, are you really (laughs) about to suggest a Jordan Davis pass? (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the odds of that are higher than him coming in at fullback. Just my opinion. I don't know that either will happen. But if I had to wait the two, I'd put you know a pass <laughs> to Jordan Davis as a high rods. I may I may like go streaking if if Jordan Davis Jordan Davis catches a, a play action pass on the goal line. That would be amazing. Be, it would be amazing. That would definitely get some headlines for sure. For sure, that would put him solidly in the conversation of all the people that talk about such things for awards. It would be the Heisman the Heisman moment. Heisman. That'd be his Heisman moment. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, can we please? I would love, I would love to, you know, if you were to fast forward and Jordan, if Jordan Davis wins the Heisman, like, can you imagine him on the Heisman house just with all these wide receivers and running backs? <laughs> like, just mountain of a man just walking in, like, <laughs> who stole my, who stole my Swedish fish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so good. So, I mean, but yeah, what you just mentioned, like Brock Bowers, like I feel like that Brock needs like a another breakout game so that he can mm-hmm. get back in the all, all American conversation because I feel like it's been relatively quiet, which isn't any, his fault because frankly Stetson missed him on such a long a long play earlier mm. uh, yeah. last, last game. So like, I mean, he's definitely been there and obviously he's had an impact. I think he didn't. He have a holding call that was fairly like. Oh, uh, like it was like one of those. That was garbage. Like, oh, come on, Brock. No, that was a horrible call. It is bad call. Oh, here's the thing. I'm not going to say he didn't hold, but what I will say is that the Tennessee wide receivers were holding on every single play on their like perimeter, you know, edge passes. Right. <laughs> and Brock did the same thing they did. He just got called. So whatever. He got called for it. Uh, let's see. Bobby Wilson. Did we sufficiently answer? Did we sufficiently answer that question? Let's see. So we said, well, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was uh, okay. Washington right. and Bowers early touches, and then Jordan Davis fridge Perry type goal die. So yeah, I think so. Got it. Uh, Bobby Wilson at Bobby Wilson one thousand four. As if people don't know who Bobby is. Uh, not really a question, but maybe a shout out to standout seniors like James Cook, Jamari Salyer. James Cook, Jamari Salyer, and Jordan Davis, and what their leadership has meant to this year's team. So, here, here, amen. I feel like this this season started when those guys said they were coming back, and they got that kind of Twitter train rolling with all these guys with the unfinished business hashtag. Right, run it back. Um, I mean, I was, I was shocked. And with James Cook, I thought James Cook was going to go to the NFL. I thought James Cook was going to leave. To me, he was one of the more surprising ones to me. I mean, and Jordan Davis, you know, not sure. Like, I don't know. I honestly, both of those, I was, I was surprised. Um, uh, it, 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 uh, it got the ball rolling. It got us thinking what could be. And to this point. Um, it's been that. And again, you know, like I, I've talked about, like, I like to look for comparisons, um, you know, not unlike 17 when Nick Chubb, you know, end of 16, right. Going to 17 when Nick Chubb, Sony, Mich- Sony, Michelle, Lorenzo Carter, uh, Davin Bellamy, right. When those guys all stood up and said, we're coming back. Um, you know, these are college football is not like the NFL. I mean, it's a very, it is a completely different sport. Um, mm-hmm. because these are kids, right? I mean, these are kids playing a kid's game. They're not professionals. Um, and the senior leadership matters and it matters a lot, uh, in this sport. Um, and I think it's, it, it's showing this year. Um, 
And so, I mean, I don't know, hats off to all those guys. Um, I appreciate them coming back. Um, I, I think, I mean, I think also, you know, like it was a good move for all of these guys. Um, like would Jordan, da- Jordan Davis, I think would have been the highest draft pick out of that, those guys we just mentioned. Um, but he's going to be an even higher draft pick now than he would have been a year ago. Um, they they oh, have sure. all made money made, you know, by coming back. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things I where I think that- it worked out on both sides. Right. I think that the what what they did is a you know kind of like a, a thesis or a graduation paper on you know the the positives that can come out of coming back. Everybody always likes to talk about like, well, you better take out the insurance policy in case you get hurt, or the likelihood that you catch a you know an ACL tear or a broken leg or whatever, like. Ligament problem, whatever it is, like all mm. this negative, Nan- all this negative Nancy stuff. At the end of the day, it's like, well, you know, I'm having fun, I'm enjoying it. Maybe I don't need the money if some of these kids are coming from, you know, situations. Or conversely, you know, I do think that there's a number, there's a couple of things in play that I feel like that people maybe haven't like realized quite yet is you had a COVID year last year which kind of erased an entire year's worth of experience from college from these guys' um, buckets. So now all of a sudden you have life basically, you know, you know, the kids and the the kids, the kids are getting an actual ish near year of, of college experience now. And it's like, Oh yeah, this was fun. Mm -hmm. This is why I decided to come to the university. I kind of want to make up for that lost time that I lost out last year. So there's that aspect of it. Yeah. The other aspect of it is that not only can I come back, but I can also make money when I previously could not. And so yeah. now you've got guys that are like, well, I don't necessarily need to go to the NFL and, and be able to like make enough to get by or at least to have the fun that I'm used to and live the standard of living that I'm living right now. Maybe I can make you know, a couple hundred thousand or – know million dollars or whatever but like that'll still be there i don't know i think that there's a a number of things that are in play that people are going to start realizing that are going to impact some of these decisions moving down the road maybe you'll see people stick around for bowl games maybe you'll see people stick around for extra seasons um obviously these covid guys you know some of the guys that were freshmen last year are going to be able to make some of these decisions moving forward and it's Mm -hmm. just like I think that to a certain extent, as a University of Georgia fan, like, you know, as an alumni, I'm a little bit grateful. Like, as you were talking through it, I was like, you know, like there was a COVID year and some of these kids can make these COVID decisions. It's like, you know, in a way, the COVID helped Kirby stockpile his talent because not only did the year slow down, these guys chose to come back, which kind of pushed back the need for us to completely fill holes. Mm. Some of these guys are making decisions, like maybe some of them are going to stay, maybe some of them aren't. And it's kind of put Kirby in the situation where the spots that he has to fill are a premium. And so he can really pick and choose what he wants. Not only that, but like the product that they've put out on the field is so elite that there's kids that are literally saying, you know what? I don't want to go to that school down South. I don't want to go to that, that dumpster fire at Florida. I want to go to the university of Georgia. Yeah. I don't want to go to Ohio state. I want to go to Georgia. I don't want to go to USC. I want to go to Georgia. Like that's, that's what's happening right now. And it's really, really fun to see it all play out. Yeah. You, you, you didn't pronounce the Florida correctly, but other than that, <laughs> Hundred percent agree. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to Fletcher Proctor. And I feel like I think you've been waiting on this one for the entire recording. What has been your all-time favorite cupcake team that has played between the hedges? Not named, and he said, "Not Nickel State." Obviously, uh, I I saw um, fifty-one to seven GATA responded with with a good one, uh, and that was. Uh, Southern, um, when they, you know, they mm-hmm. brought their, their band, um, you know, obviously you know, he mentioned, obviously, you know, Devin Gale. George, I, mm-hmm. I was talking about G- Georgia Southern, right? No, no Southern university. Just, oh, Southern university. Right. Okay, okay. They, they've got like the, okay. what the human jukebox. 
uh, band. Mm-hmm. But that you know that was the game when uh, Devin Gales got injured, so he was calling out like you know, that. That's obviously, right. wasn't 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 great in the game. But you know, seeing their band, although, you know, I mean now you know, I mean Devin Gales is uh, enrolled at Georgia, I believe, is a, is a student at Georgia now. Um, uh, hmm. But at, at any rate, uh, do you have one? I, so I I have one that I think I'm not sure like uh, if it qualifies as a cupcake or not. I mean, to me it is, but mine's Kent state in 1998 is Kent state. Do mm. they count as a cupcake? I think they're a cup- To me, they're a cupcake. Okay. Um, and the reason, I mean, my reasoning is just that was my first game as a Georgia student. So my freshman year, that was the first, first game. So that's mine. And that was the Quincy Carter debut. I, and I remember like, you know the first drive. Uh, I don't. I don't remember how many plays, but the first touchdown was a Quincy Carter to Champ Bailey, just like absolute bomb. Um, so I don't know. I'll always remember that. So so that that's mine hmm. personally. If you can count, you know, right. there's not a direction in their name. You know, generally, uh, directional schools are always cupcakes. But anyways, right, right. Um, let's see. All right, so so favorite cupcake. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Georgia Tech. This is, <laughs> this is okay, let's move on. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously, seriously. Um, I'm I'm a big I'm a big proponent of in-state rivalries, and mm-hmm. so like. I would love to see like Kennesaw State rise to that level. I know we haven't like gotten there yet, but like um, Georgia Southern, I think is is a great like for now like in state cupcake rivalry because of the obviously the Eric Russell connections and yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm a big fan of like let's preserve all of the in state things that makes Georgia great. Yeah. Um. So that's that's. That would be that would be my answer, but I have a feeling that Kennesaw State is eventually going to get to that level, but that's a, a little ways off. Yeah, fair, fair. Okay, now this is the part. This, his second question, I think, is what you've been really waiting for. Also, <laughs> because we are playing a cupcake, what is your favorite Little Debbie product? And Fletcher adds, eleven months a year, it's Swiss rolls for me. But for December, it has to be Christmas tree cakes. So do you do you have a favorite? Okay, so a favorite growing up or like a favorite, like if I were to go to the store like today and get, because <laughs> I feel like a clarification is needed here. Mm, I mean, growing, it, up, or growing up all, all through like, like, I was a sucker for honey buns growing up. Mm -hmm. Like honey buns were like my jam. So like if I went on a road trip, if I was in high school and I needed a quick breakfast, like I would, I would destroy some honey buns and I would get excited when my mom came home with honey buns. However, I would also get excited when she came home with like the, what were they like the, I mean, all right. So this is this kind of goes into like now, Fletcher's question. I mean, question, I'm right? sitting here. I've got the little Debbie website up right now, so I can look at everything. You you don't have this <laughs> level of preparation like me. I mean, I'm on the site. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I little didn't. Uh, little Debbie dot com. I didn't because because I had my answer because my answer okay. technically is is honey buns. Like okay. honey buns okay. is like my my thing. Um, yeah. I haven't actually purchased a little Debbie product in like probably multiple years. Multiple, I have no idea. Years. My, my question would actually be, have I ever personally purchased a little Debbie? Cause like, like, because like we don't have them like in our house, but I had them in, in, in my house growing up. Like, so like my oh, parents bought sure. them, right? Like I ate uh, them, but like, you know, have we bought them for our kids? And like, this is where our kids like get mad at us. So like, well, you got to have these things. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, I don't know. Exactly. I, I feel I feel like Kim like would totally squash that, and I I, I don't know that our <laughs> we've ever bought this. <laughs> I feel like, dang dude, are you serious? I'm sure we Man. have. I know they've had them. I've definitely purchased the Christmas cakes because I remember my mm. wife like bitching bitching and moaning at me about buying like the red velvet Christmas cakes. Mm. She's yeah. like, there's so many, there's so many dyes in this. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I <forget> <laughs> uh, uh, 
but the Swiss cake rolls. All right, so here's my deal. Like basically, like all the cake stuff, like the devil squares, the the fancy cakes, the Swiss cake rolls. I mean, I personally enjoy the chocolate cupcakes, which I think like other brands maybe oh, call like. Dude, so, the chocolate, so for me, that like again, like back as a kid, like it was the chocolate cupcakes for me. Like we'll, as far we'll as what I, I wanted to have. Now, did I have like yeah. as far as like having the most? You know, Swiss rolls. Like we used to buy those. Um, the Nutty yeah. Buddies. I know, like the bars. Nutty Buddies are so. So we used to eat those. Um, you know, we used to get the oatmeal Zebra cream pies. Case. We used to get the oatmeal cream pies as well, but now those have a negative connotation because Saban eats them like every day. So now I can't, I can't even look at them. Like I don't want everything mm-hmm. to do with them. But mm-hmm. as a kid, I did mm-hmm. like those. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. I don't know. <sighs> the, the... For nostalgia purposes, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the chocolate chocolate cupcakes because I just did you did, did you did you ever have the Star Crunch? Uh, what what category? <laughs> Is that under on the website? Because <laughs> I don't, I don't remember those. The, the Star Crunch was the one that was like a cookie coated in like Rice Krispies and oh, caramel. Cookie. It basically like you took one bite of it and it was like you were trapped. Oh, I see <laughs> that. Yes, I have had that. Ooh, yeah, those are yes. amazing. Mm. I know, I know you have. Okay, yeah, of course I have. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, so the chocolate cut. I feel like the chocolate cakes, the ding dongs, or ho hos, or whatever you want to call them, like those types of things, are like the quintessential. Like that's like how little did. De- I feel like that's like how little Debbie got their start. Right? Was mm. in stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. But everything else, I feel like once you get like, all right, so you got the the chocolate cupcakes. Let's let's just assume that that was like their first product. Literally everything else after that is just an iteration of that product. <laughs> right. Because the cake is the same. Right. It's the same cake. Yeah, but it's still amazing. They're all amazing. Yes, they're all amazing. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, like you could literally just basically it's like, all right, uh, well, the chocolate cupcake is my favorite. Well, I also like the devil square. Well, it's literally the same thing, sir. Right. Right. Yeah. Fair. I remember. I I'm remember still going chocolate. Like, really I'm still going chocolate cupcakes as my favorite. Yeah, for sure. Chocolate and cupcake would would definitely be my favorite for sure. Well, outside of outside of the the honey buns. Okay. Because okay. that was a, so you got like a one a. a. You got like a one and a one a. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, I remember. I remember as a kid, like being like strawberry shortcake rolls. Like, this this is going to be so amazing, and then actually eating it, and I was like, no, oh, this doesn't taste as good as I thought it was going to be. Right. 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 Uh, okay. you're, you're, Fletcher, Fletcher, Fletcher took me back to my fat kid days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. So good. All right. I, I love how like we were more into that than like analyzing <laughs> the opponent. That's okay. Hey, I'm so, I'm so yeah, into it because you can go into so many things because then you can go into like value per ounce. Like we could talk about value per ounce instead mm. of yards per play. Let's talk about value per ounce on little <laughs> Debbie cakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good, so good. All right, well, I don't, I, I don't have, the, I didn't hook up the soundboard tonight. So apologies to Coach Drew Bill. Uh, so, so no, no intro music this week. Wait, 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 can, got, can you do I, the, I got, I got, the human intro got, music? <laughs> so good, so good. What, what's that? It's Coach Drew Bill's music that John's doing. All right, coaches over unders. Uh, UGA points over under. 63 and a half. So he has gone above, above the Vegas line. Uh, mm. Should we, should we table that until we get the actual predictions? We'll table that one. We'll, we'll just acknowledge that was coach Joe Bill's line. And when we, when we get Got our it. score predictions, we'll know. Um, over under seven and a half offensive TVs. I mean, that's similar there, but that's not totally. I told should we should we just table Coach Trills? We can table um, those too. Let's go to the rest of them. Score, the rest of them don't score, score, score items. Yeah, okay. the rest of them don't matter as much. Over under one point five defensive touchdowns. One point five defensive touchdowns. I'm gonna go under. Okay, I'm um, gonna agree. I'll go under. And then mm-hmm. over under point five special teams touchdowns. I'm gonna go over. I want th- I want to take that. I'm gonna go under. Okay, I I think, I think this is the this is the game where we get a punt return for a touchdown. That's I'm, I'm calling it right now. Um, wait, 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 
What, uh, we're, we're talking we're talking like punt return and kick return touchdowns, or are we talking like we block the kick touchdowns? It doesn't matter. As well. Special okay, teams is okay. a third of the game. I'm, I'm going under. I'm going under. You're still going under. Okay. It could be any, any, go any of all of the above, right? So, okay. 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 Uh, fair, fair. Over under 275 passing yards for Georgia. Total? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, two two seventy five was the number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go over. And then mm. over under two fifty rushing yards total. I'll go under. You're gonna go under both of those? You don't think we're gonna have five hundred yards of offense? Because I do. Over. All the overs. Okay. Uh, over I have, a feeling, I have a feeling. I have a feeling we're gonna have some short fields. Let's just let's just uh, put it that okay, way. Okay, that's fair. Mm, see, I hadn't take that into, taken that into account. Mm. See them. Yeah. You okay. See, you're putting the, you're, you're putting a lot more preparation to, <laughs> into this than I thought. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay where I was. I'm gonna stay that. Uh, okay. JT enters the game in the second quarter. I think he. Mm. Yeah. Order, this, this is a good line. In 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 the hopes in the hopes of getting to Jackson Muschamp, I'm gonna say over. <laughs> <laughs> so meaning but yes, 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 yes he gets in, in the same I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna define that as a push. because uh, I think it will be <laughs> I think it will be the second quarter when JT enters. I think it's I think okay. we'll see something like Stetson gets the first quarter, JT gets the second and maybe into the third. And then from there on, we just kind of start emptying the bench. Uh, or that, that's how I hope it goes. It. That's my Got script, it. if I could write it. Um, and then he said, uh, this is more of a just a prediction, uh, loudest senior day applause, and his pick is Jordan Davis. So we'll just say Jordan Davis or the field. Um, Who are the other seniors? Uh, James Cook. Man, this is where I really wish I did have the soundboard because I would have just interjected with Robert Beal. Deal. As a senior. Um, <laughs> I mean, this this is the thing, though, right? Where we get back, gets back to from the news and notes. Kirby talking about seniors walking, right? I mean, Stetson Bennett could be out there, or he could not be, mm-hmm. right? So, um, I think those are probably going to be the closest ones. I don't think there will be a smattering of booze for Stetson, as Chip Towers once said. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, think Jordan I, I kind of think Jordan Davis though. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's the right call. For so, sure. For sure. I, I will say it's not as easy of a pick as like when say Rodrigo Blankenship was here, right? Like that was like <laughs> somehow easily always the most cheers. <laughs> so yeah, I would say it's sure. not that cut and dry, but I do think it's Jordan Davis. Okay. Uh, so into our game predictions themselves. Uh, so the spread. Uh, is Georgia is favored by 54 and a half. The over under is 61 and a half. Um, so that gives us the implied score of Georgia 58, like 58 to three and a half, you know, something like that. Uh, or the odd shark predicted score is Georgia 56 to nothing. Um, I'm just gonna, I'll just go with mine. Um, I've got Georgia winning fifty-two to three. That's my that's my prediction. I'm going I'm going straight up like statistics here okay. uh, on on their on their score line. So we're averaging about twenty three points like impact to the opposing team's average score line, which puts us at three points. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go from that to what does it look like to cover? So I'm going to go fifty eight to three. 50 okay. I would love to hit 60, which like what's 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 the what's the biggest what's the biggest scoring differential for Sanford Stadium, like for a home game? Hmm. I have no idea. That would idea. be interesting. We'll put we'll put glasses on it for the review game. Yeah, man, I really really needed when I said I don't have the soundboard hooked up and you said it was okay, you should have said hook that up. Because <laughs> I would have just used it again. That's okay. That's okay. Hook it up. We can. We'll, we'll be okay. We'll be, we made it. We made it. Through. 
I feel like you can inject that like post post production. I could. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Why did I even mention that at all? It's totally easy. Easy post production. Uh, that's okay. Next time. Next time. But now that I've said it and like admitted it, I'd have to edit myself out of saying that, and that's just way too much work. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, I am excited um, for senior day. Uh, I don't know. TBD. I would say still up in the air if I go there. I would say um, I would, I don't know, probably leaning towards I probably won't be there, but who knows? I may have a last minute change. And, and, over, and, over, and under, over under over under point five Jim Wood appearances in Athens. So what about, <laughs> what about point five members of My Got a Podcast? <laughs> attend this game Let's, we're going to set that at 0. 0.5 <laughs> under <laughs> uh, what, oh now now, ooh, now, now <laughs> here's my opportunity to say over and then go and then beat you on that one pick <laughs> nice uh, so yeah um, I don't know man the, the opportunity to wear my starter jacket at the Sanford Stadium is, is kind of that's, that's kind of swaying me a little bit we'll see um, but yeah no but but Regardless, um, great day to, to honor the seniors. Um, so for those who are going to be there, it will be attendance, be in attendance, uh, you know, cheer for those guys. Um, and, you know, kind of one, one last chance to, to soak it all up and, and, and see this special team to play between the hedges this year. So um, definitely envious of those who will be there. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, just, just especially because it's just another, another opportunity to see the, the dogs play at home. Um, but yeah, um, if you are tailgating, I recommend a, um, a nice, a nice honey bun with a, <laughs> with a, um, <laughs> with a nice, nice sweet, a sweet bourbon. Um, I'll go with the, 1792 bottled and bond. I, I may, I may, I may actually like, I may actually tweet out a picture of my, my little Debbie pairing for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I, I, now I'm like, man, we we're definitely having like the chocolate cupcakes for dessert after the game on Saturday. So, so it's, it's not a celebratory cigar. It's a celebratory little Debbie. Thanks yeah. a lot, Fletcher. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Now what if we do that? But you could get the Swiss rolls. And then, like you're eating a, a Swiss roll, and have the picture like you're smoking a cigar. That That's I it. feel like that works. That's it. That works. Let's, okay. do, let's do it. Okay, definitely. Let's do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's, my, my wife will have way less judgment on me if I do that, which is actually saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. Well, I don't know we, we weren't exactly sure uh, how we were going to go through and pre- preview this one, but. Uh, Thank you. Thank you to uh, everyone who sent in a question. Uh, Much appreciated. Uh, And we got some good ones as we, as we always do. So thank you. so much. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Um, But yeah, go dogs. Go dogs.